For USCFootball.com, I'm Jack Smith alongside Shotgun Spratling for instant analysis from USC's 48-20 loss here in South Bend, Indiana at Notre Dame Stadium where USC seasons have gone to die in the last decade or so. The Trojans came into this one having not won here since 2011 and that continued here tonight with the 28-point loss where USC beat itself and route to getting blown out. Yeah, I can't decide really whether I want to say USC beat itself or they got their ass whooped because it's a little bit of a combination of both. Um, Notre Dame helped them beat themselves, obviously, but USC, way too many penalties, five turnovers, special teams was atrocious outside of Zachariah Branch being special. Um, you, you know, and so you end up looking at the scoreboard, USC's comes you know they struggle in the first half, give up three interceptions, they all result in touchdowns, but they're still kind of in it. And then the second half, the offense starts getting a, gaining a little bit of momentum, and you know they score to get within 11 with what was it, 12 or 13 minutes left, if it, somewhere in there. And like if they get a stop here, this could be a three-point game immediately because USC was actually moving the ball pretty well. Instead, they give up a touchdown the other way. The defense never even touches the field. USC gave up 48 points, nearly half a hundred. And you can't look at the defense and fault them for anything. I mean, the, the defense was really good. They had, you know, the four touchdown drives that Notre Dame had. We counted it up before this. Were 132 combined yards. You know, one of them was two yards. The, the, the interceptions gave them short fields or after short fields. Notre Dame added at the end. You know, when it was a 11 point game after the touchdown, they added a couple more scores late because USC went for it on fourth down. Uh, and so they got a field goal off of that. The defense holding there. And then the offense. Fumble, scoop, and scores. So the offense gives up another touchdown. So uh, it was just, you know, it went from bad to worse to terrible for USC in a span of about four minutes of game time in the fourth quarter after what had been, looked like it might turn out to be a really exciting finish the way USC was kind of playing in the second half. The defense was fantastic in the second half in particular, um, you know, just getting stop after stop after stop uh, and giving the offense a chance. Offense, like I said, took a little bit of time to get, get rolling, in the, even in the second half, you know, a couple drives, and then finally they started to find their way down the field. But, you know, it, it comes back to turnovers. And Lincoln Riley said afterwards, he said, honestly, when you lose the turnover battle 5-0, it really doesn't matter anything else. Nothing else really matters in that, that regard. And he's right. And then he even added, he said, hey, when you give up a special teams touchdown like the kick return, it's kind of a six turnover is what it feels like. So you lose 6-0 on a turnover battle, you're not going to win any game. And especially against a quality opponent like Notre Dame. Yeah, I felt like USC lost by 28. They gave up 21 points off three interceptions as well as they fumbled on offense and that went straight to a scoop and score. So you could say USC's offense, they gave up 28 points, really that didn't really give the defense much of a chance on those drives. That was the difference in the game. It certainly was early on. And it feels weird to say, but Caleb Williams was the problem early on today. Three interceptions on plays that he says he usually makes or some, some that he normally doesn't throw, but he was kind of off in the first half. The Notre Dame defense credit them, did a great job getting him off uh, off of his kilter a little bit, but some of the throws were bad and not ones that we normally see Caleb make. Yeah, it's rare for him to have a multi-turnover game, much less three interceptions in the first half. He said, I made mistakes that I don't normally make, and he's absolutely correct. The problem is Caleb has covered up for so many other people's mistakes. He needs someone to pick him up in this game. He's picked up everyone else in the Arizona game, in the Arizona State game. In every game along the way, he's picked up everyone else and covered up for their mistakes, whether it be the defense, whether it be the offense, whoever. They couldn't pick up for him. And that's that's the issue right now is USC doesn't have enough guys contributing um, outside of Caleb. So they didn't run the ball well. They ran the ball 37 times and averaged 2.8 carries. Now, part of that was six sacks that plays into it, but it's not like any of the running backs really had long runs. Their best run of the night, called back for a penalty. Caleb Williams had a 38-yard touchdown, taken off the board. Zachariah Branch had a couple nice runs, had a couple nice returns. It was great to see him back in the lineup after you know missing a couple games, and he created a spark for sure. But outside of him, you look around and you go, who else really did anything this game? And you can't really pick anybody. I mean, Tackett Curtis, I thought he played really well on the defensive side. He led the team in tackles. As Zion Branch came in, there were a couple of small pieces. The cornerbacks played really well. But overall, no one on the offensive side. And Lincoln Riley, you know, was asked kind of about the offense and why are they struggling to get in a rhythm. And he said it was kind of everyone took their turn. He said, I made a couple bad calls. Caleb made the bad throws. Our running backs you know, had a couple holes they didn't run through. The offensive line wasn't blocking on certain things. Uh, the receivers dropped. And he's right. 
every single person was making mistakes. And so, you know, that's how you end up with a team loss where, you know, it turns from a close game to a, into a blowout really quickly like that because no one was stepping up uh, to, to help out Caleb in this game. And, you know, if, if they don't, if Caleb doesn't cover up for everyone's mistakes, you know, who's going to start stepping up? And that needs to be a big question in that locker room right now. It feels like it's been three weeks now, four weeks, where the Trojans haven't played a full four quarters together. It feels like it's been a while, too, since all three sides worked at the same time, maybe since that Stanford first half uh, for USC. It felt like the first time they were doing that was when the defense gets a couple stops, then Zachariah Branch gets a big return on special teams, then USC punches it in the end zone. You feel like, okay, you've got three sides right there. USC is down 11. It's the second time they had pulled it within 11 in the second half. And then they give up the big touchdown on the on the kick return. That felt like the big turning point. Where who knows? And you know, in the multiverse somewhere, there's a game that's being played right now that USC doesn't give up the kick return. Maybe they get another stop. They were in a good position, probably the best position that they were in all night, and they squandered it. And you know, there were questions, obviously, all season, all off season, about USC not having a special teams coordinator. One of the big mistakes that had plagued them last year, and it kind of comes back to bite them again. Do you feel concerned that all of these small mistakes that kind of have Traces back to last season aren't being fixed completely. I mean, there's things that have been fixed, and Lincoln's talked about those and really pointed out the ones that have been fixed, but the ones that haven't are the ones that are biting them the most. I mean, they should fire their special teams coach. Oh, wait, they can't because, you know, they don't have one. Um, you know, it's, it's something they piecemeal together among the coaching staff, but, like, that's unacceptable. And there's been a couple of other times. I mean, earlier in the game, uh, you saw Dennis Lynch make a tackle. Like, your kicker shouldn't be make, making a tackle on a kickoff. Um, you know, that's the last resort. And, you know, it, it's, a, it's a backbreaker. And it wasn't just you, – you can absorb one big blow like that, but you can't do it when you've already given up three interceptions, when you later give up a scoop and score, like all those things, you can't compile all those uh, difficulties. Um, and, you know, I asked Lincoln, he, he talked about, this, we're this close, you know, there's all these small mistakes, and he's right. You look at it and you can see 10 guys doing their job a lot of times, but it's that one guy not doing his job. And that's the problem with USC right now. So I asked him, how do you fix those? And he said, you go to work. And so that's what they got to do. They continue to work. And one of the things he pointed out is that they have to block out all the noise. They can't pay attention to what anything is said outside, you know, the locker room in this next week. Obviously, big opponent for them, Utah. They still have everything in front of them as far as the Pac-12 championship. Lincoln Riley, again, same thing he did last year against after the Utah loss. He said, hey, you know, I've still made it even, you know, I've lost games and still made it to the playoffs. I've lost games, still made it to the conference championship. And he pointed out tonight that, you know, every time he's lost a game, um, they've still made it every time except for once. He's When he's lost a game early, early in the season, they still made it to the, the conference championship game um, and that game he said that they were one play away but they got to clean a lot of stuff up and that's the biggest concern for me is like it's not like you can point and be like this if they just fix the tackling the tackling was great tonight and if they can continue that that's great but the tackling was great but suddenly on the offensive side you can't block anybody the offensive line struggled and it's been a couple weeks now that it's struggled so they've got to get that fixed in a hurry um, whether it's the communication whether it's just physical beats there were too often you would see an offensive lineman on the ground uh, so I don't know if they were struggling with a little bit damp feel with the drizzle and stuff that there had been during this but whatever the reason you know they're just getting physically beat at times and that you know is why Caleb was running around for his life a lot of times and that the pressure is what caused those interceptions each of the three interceptions there was pressure on each one of them now he missed on throws and he mentioned it, particularly the first interception he's like that's a throw I'd always make even when someone's in his face he normally does that he rarely throws high especially over the middle it's one of the cardinal sins uh, of a quarterback but the constant pressure is what forced those interceptions, and you know, you know, no one really picked him up. You know, if, if the ground game ran for 250 yards, you can say, okay, Caleb can have an off day, but apparently he can't. It's not allowed for him to have an off game if USC wants to win games. So either someone's going to have to step up, or Caleb has to get back to being Superman. Yeah, I felt like the offensive line was, you know, definitely big reasons on some of the interceptions, but also throws that Caleb either normally makes or should not throw in general. It felt like after three weeks, there were a lot of answers if you asked the question, what is USC good at? The last couple of weeks, I feel like stuff has been getting knocked off the list as USC starts to struggle. After seven football games, what can you confidently say USC does well? Uh, their quarterback is special and number one is special. So, you know, what do they do really well? They let those guys shine, um, and normally they carry them a long way. Uh, and then you hope that the defense doesn't ruin things, and you hope your special teams doesn't ruin things. That's kind of been the the key for them, and they've been able to edge out some of those victories. But tonight shows when when 13 has an off night, that's it. 
there's no chance to win because that was the case tonight. And, and I thought he played much better in the second half. He was much more under control. But again, he was constantly being harassed back there. And they took a bunch of sacks. And that's the thing is it's it's the sacks, but it's also the penalties. A lot of often pre-snap penalties still on the road. You know, that's still been an issue, especially early in games. Holding penalties, a couple of offensive pass interference calls that backed up drives. And, the, and they got over a lot of those. They still picked up first downs multiple times. And, you know, when they started drives first and 20 years, set, ended up being second and 20 years third and 32 um, there were situations they were getting themselves in and those third and long second and longs are all uh, generating from the first down issues that they're having with going backwards you know they're just putting themselves in too big of holes and then you're like okay we're, we're, now it's second and 20 Caleb come rescue us because you can't run the ball out of second and 20 and feel confident that you're going to get 12 yards and be back in you know a decent position so you know that's the thing is like everyone's making those small mistakes but they're adding up to being hey Caleb come bail us out and when he doesn't you see what happened and I felt like in the second half he played really well, but he was also a lot more conservative. You know, and it felt like another week where the receivers weren't getting completely open. Now there were some where they didn't have time completely to get open. But the corners for Notre Dame were very good. They baited Caleb Williams a couple times, so it was a really great defensive day for Notre Dame that was looking for their defense to really help their offense. And you talk about the Notre Dame offense, only 13 first downs, so USC's defense certainly was not the problem tonight. What are some of the the positives that you take away from a performance like this, and what does USC need to work on the most going forward? I mentioned a couple times the the or a couple of the guys that stood out kind of on defense uh, with Tackett Curtis, Zion Branch, those young guys. And that's a positive sign to see those young guys maybe taking that step. We saw Braylon Shelby in there, a good amount. Um, but the pass rush wasn't there tonight, and that's been something that's helped them out a lot. Now, I, when I go back and watch the game, we'll see maybe a little bit res, more of a reserved game plan. You know, I can't really tell that as much when I'm shooting photos, but when I rewatch the game, that'll be something to watch, and maybe that's something to take forward with them a little bit. Like, hey, just trust your DBs to make some plays and drop a couple of guys into coverage rather than trying to blitz all the time. Um, I thought the linebackers played really well. I, I think that was something, you know, they didn't completely stop the Notre Dame rush, but they slowed it down really well, same as last year. And, you know, Sam Hartman hit on one big pass. Other than that, I, I don't even know how many yards he threw for. It wasn't 200 yards. I mean, Notre Dame had what 251 yards I think is what they finished with lowest since you know USC beat up on Colorado last year an awful Colorado team this is a good team on the other side Notre Dame and you know their offense isn't great and USC's defense stepped up and kept them from doing much anything but except they were always in scoring position to start drives and USC couldn't keep them out of the end zone consistently so they didn't they did good but they didn't do great if they had done great and held on the field goals all the time maybe it's a different game going going into this but you can't blame them because they had done so well but you know the positives are Zachariah Branch getting him back and getting him healthy and showing what he can do um, I thought Brendan Rice had another nice game I don't know that he really had many catches or anything um, but he had the touchdown he could have had a long touchdown as well, but he was just, at, you know, just tackled on a play, uh, you know. But their their DBs were really good. Xavier Watts had a monster performance for Notre Dame. He kind of beat USC single handedly with two interceptions. Forced a fumble, recovered a fumble. Um, so, you know, he had a monster game, and USC, like I said, you know, they didn't get many, perform many positive performances outside of the couple of guys we mentioned. Uh, USC has a tough schedule up ahead. Lincoln Riley prefers to consider it a bunch of opportunities ahead with a bunch of ranked teams. With You've got Utah, you have Washington, you have Oregon. Those two teams played today. Where does your confidence lie for USC with these opportunities coming up? Yeah, I mean, there were fans here, you know, saying F. Caleb Williams. No, I think they chanted at one point, bye-bye Heisman or say goodbye to the Heisman, something like that. But this is the same spot that USC lost in last year when they lost to Utah. Now, that was a much closer loss than this blowout, but they started getting on a roll after that. Now they, it was a little up and down, um, and the defense really struggled. But if the defense can play like it did today and force punts, three and outs a couple times, force punts over and over in the second half, it, you know you feel really confident that the offense will start to clean things up. But it's got to happen in a hurry. Um, and Lincoln Riley said, we can't let this loss beat us twice. We have to you know, put it aside. You know, sulk about it on the plane ride home is, is what I would tell them. You know, cry your eyes out if you want, whatever. Get back home and get back to work. And you got to start cleaning those things up. And it starts for me with the offense line. If they get the offense line figured out, it cleans up so many things. And Lincoln Riley, when I did ask him about how you fix those mistakes, he's, you know, when he's talking about work, he said, if we just flip, flip a couple of those, a couple of those small mistakes, suddenly things will flip really quickly. So if you get the offense line fixed, then your, your run game is going to pick up. Caleb's going to have more time. Caleb's going to dissect and you know tear apart defenses. Suddenly the offense looks like itself again. But it's going to be a big challenge next week.
Utah's defense has been phenomenal all season. I believe Cole Bishop got uh, ejected for a targeting penalty, so uh, he'll be out for the first half. So they need to take advantage of that. They need to come out of the shoot ready to, to play and ready to, to go out there and perform the way they did the first half or the first quarter and a half of both the, the Utah games that they played last year and continue that through four quarters. That's one of the biggest things for this team right now is can you play four quarters? We have not seen it from them all season. We haven't seen it. You know, whether it be the Stanford game, they take all the starters out, and the second half was not very good. They have not played four quarters yet. If they do, this team can be scary good. But it's a lot of those. It's all those small mistakes that have added up to keep them from doing that. So uh, you know, they got to go to work this week. That's the biggest thing. And Lincoln Riley said uh, the number one word that can continue to come out of his mouth was disappointed. And, you know, you can be disappointed. It is a non-conference game. You can recover from it. Can you go do work in the Pac-12 and get yourself, uh, you know, work your way back up um, in the rankings and all those different things? Uh, they'll, they'll still have a chance. If they went out, they would still be in the college football playoff. No one would doubt the, you know, that with the gauntlet that they have coming up. But it all starts with this week in practice and then carrying it over uh, against Utah next week. Yeah, I feel like the offensive line, I would agree, is the biggest thing they need to fix. I feel like this performance that we saw here today from the offensive line is similar to the one that we saw in Vegas against Utah in the Pac-12 championship game, which makes it a little scary because you're facing that Utah defensive front again that's really good. The good news is for USC, they get to return home to the Coliseum. You have to make sure they don't come out as flat as they did last week at home against Arizona. It looks like a good team, Arizona, beating Washington State 44-6 to today. But that's all we've got for you guys for instant analysis today. A tough loss for the Trojans. Easily their worst under Lincoln Riley and Caleb Williams, and easily Caleb Williams' worst game that he has played as a Trojan and we'll see if they can rebound from here because as Lincoln Riley has said there's opportunities ahead can the Trojans take advantage that's something that we'll see for the rest of the season anyways for Shotgun Spratling I'm Jack Smith signing off here from South Bend where the Trojans drop a 48-20 rivalry game to Notre Dame we'll have a lot of stuff going on the website here today a lot of videos here on YouTube including Lincoln Riley's press conference here on Inside Troy but anyways check out uscfootball.com for more